Welcome to the Mission History Nights YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Anyway, in a previous video, where I claimed that the old British money was a lot simpler to use than people realise, I did use very simplistic examples, a dozen eggs or two dozen eggs, where you wouldn't actually need to use any arithmetic. And in this video, I'm going to use a much more realistic example. And I'm taking from my reference a Teach Yourself book, Teach Yourself Arithmetic, published in 1958. It starts off by saying that multiplication, in terms of the old British money, requires considerable care. Several methods are in use, but the following should suffice. They are based on recommendations of the Mathematical Association. So let's have a look at them very briefly. Short multiplication. This is used when the multiplier is less than 13. For example, multiply 37 pounds 14 shillings and 7 pence by 8. Yes, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Here's another example, multiplying by 7. Multiplication by factors. The example is 54 bicycles, 14 pounds, 8 shillings and 10 pence each. Use 9 times 6 equals 54 and do it as two separate multiplications. First multiply by 9 and then multiply the answer by 6. Long multiplication. The wholesale or top line method. Yes, that looks straightforward, doesn't it? This one's quite good. Practice. It consists of expressing a quantity as a set of aliquot parts. I do hope I've pronounced aliquot correctly. And there's an example. But I think in reality, businesses would have adding machines. And people such as tradesmen buying supplies from building merchants, for example, wouldn't go to all this effort. They would have not a pocket calculator, but a pocket reckoner. This is a small, handy, pocket-sized book. You can see the size of it compared to a mouse. And what it consists of are tables, each page for a specific sum of money and quantities. And the idea is basically, if you need to find so many of such and such a price, find the price, go down the column, find the quantity, and make use of the total. So, let's have a look at that example. Make out a bill for the following goods purchased and find the total cost. So this is paint, wallpaper, distemper and brushes. So this is something you would buy from a builder's merchants. Bear in mind, this is a 1958 book. Presumably the prices are realistic at that time. Seven tins of paint are eight shillings and three pence a tin. Thirteen rolls of wallpaper at sixteen shillings and five pence a roll. 14 pounds of distemper at one shilling and five and a half pence per pound. And three brushes costing two and nine, four and seven, and 13 and five. So let's go through each one and use the ready reckoner and see if we can fill this in. And the reason I'm using an example from a book is that I can then look up the answers at the back and make sure I've got it right. Now then, this cash sale invoice is a fabrication. My father had a window conversion business in the 1970s and he kept his accounts in boxes, which I've recently gone through. And I found lots and lots of receipts, but none for pre-decimal money. But he did buy, on occasion, supplies from this company, Dawson's, at Mitcham Road, Tooting. Such as this one, which is, as I say, after decimalisation. So, I've made this cash sale invoice to demonstrate the use of the Ready Reckoner. The information, the addresses and the telephone number were correct in 1958 because I looked it up in the telephone directory. And here's the entry in the telephone directory from 1958. Okay, let's get started. First off, Mr. L. Ranger, just a random name. Seven tins of paint at eight shillings and threepence a tin. So, we go to the ready reckoner. Unfortunately, there's an entry for eight shillings and threepence. So we just go down the left-hand column to seven and read off the total, two pounds, 17 shillings and nine pence. I'll put that on the bill on the right hand side, two pounds, 17 shillings and nine pence. So going back to the question, 13 rolls of wallpaper at 16 shillings and five pence a roll. Now, we need to look up 16 shillings and five pence in the ready reckoner. Unfortunately, there isn't a separate page for that exact amount, so we've got to do two things. We've got to do 16 shillings and five, sh five pence and then add the two together. So here we are on the page for 16 shillings, go down to 13, 10 pounds, 8 shillings. We now need to put this on a separate piece of paper because we're going to have to add up the 16 shillings amount with the 5 pence amount. 
So we go to the page in the ready reckoner for five pence, and again goes to 13, and it's five shillings and five pence. I'll put that on a piece of paper, add the two together, pretty straightforward. 10 pounds, 13 shillings and five pence, and put that onto the sales invoice. Third item from the question. 14 pounds of distemper. That's one shillings, five pence a pound. So let's have a look in the ready reckoner for one shilling and five and a half pence. Yes, there's a page just for that. One shilling, five and a half pence. 14 of them, one pound and five pence. And put that onto the bill. Back at the question, three brushes, two and nine, four and seven, and 13 and five. Let's just put them straight on because there are no multiplications here because all one of each. And there you have it. All those, all those modifications, all those multiplication methods. We, we just looked up the ready reckoner, got the answer, added some numbers, and here we are. And so the final thing is to do the addition of these totals on the right hand side to give the grand total. So let's copy those amounts onto a separate piece of paper. Like so. Stop from the right hand side. There are no fractions. So we just go for the pennies. 9 plus 5 plus 5 is 19. Plus 9 is 28. Plus 7 is 35. And 5 is 40. 40 pence. Well, we now we've got to extract the shillings out of that. So divide it by 12. 3 twelves, 36. Gives you a remainder of 4. That remainder of 4 becomes the total for the pennies column. And that 3 has to be carried as 3 shillings to the shilling column. So, we now add up 17 and 13, that's 30, and 2 is 32, 4 is 36, and 13 is 49. Don't forget to carry the 3 shillings, add that to the 49, 52, 52 shillings. We now need to divide that by 20 to get the pounds. 2, 2 20 is a 40, 40 from 52 is 12, so it's 2 remainder 12. That 12 is the amount of shillings in the shillings column. There you go. And don't forget to carry the two. So now we add up the pounds column. Two, 10 and one, 13. Don't forget that carrying of two, put it there. 15, put that in the answer there. 15 pounds, 12 shillings and four pence. Let's put that back on the bill. 15 pounds, 12 shillings and four pence. Is that the answer? Well, let's look it up in the book. There's the answer section of that book. And there you go, there's the answer. 15 pounds, 12 shillings and fourpence. No multiplication needed at all. Wasn't that easy? Well, it was, but it was rather long, long-winded long though, wasn't it? It is much better these days, of course, but I thought I'd just demonstrate how people used to use a ready reckoner, almost like a pocket calculator, to get around the problem of lots of multiplications. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did get this far, please comment. I will try to rep reply to all comments. And if you liked the video, of course, press the like button. And if you didn't, tell me why you didn't. <laughs> Bye for now.